This video goes over how to solve ODEs numerically using Maple, what to watch out for, and how to do a couple of plots that are useful. Let's get started. I'm going to assume that you've watched the previous video on how to enter ODEs, how to use DSolve to solve ODEs, and how to extract your solution from ODEs in this particular video. So here's our ODE, here's our initial condition. We want to be able to solve this numerically. Okay. It's very similar as before. Our solutions are using the DSolve procedure. We pass it a set of equations, both the ODE and the initial condition equation. In this case, we need only one because this is a first order ODE. With all numerical problems, you have to provide all the conditions for it to be able to solve the problem numerically. Not surprisingly, we add the new option, numeric, that tells Maple to solve it using the numerical technique. However, I strongly encourage you, despite what you may read otherwise, to include the following procedure uh, option as well. Output equals list procedure. The reason why you'll do this is now you will get a set of procedures from which you can extract and then you can use the solutions, treat it literally as a function that you've made yourself. But before we extract the solutions, let's see what solutions is. It is a list of techniques that will use the information from the initial conditions through the ODE and find values at other locations. So if I say, what is our solutions for both X and Y of X at a location of X equals zero, it will tell us what that value is. Notice it does not matter whether it's going forwards or backwards. So there's the value of what X is at zero, and this is the value of Y at that same location. Let's extract out the solution now. Y underscore underscore num right arrow colon equals. Let's evaluate for what Y of X is from our solutions. And it pulls out the procedure information. This is the Runga-Kutta technique that is used to find value of Y at other locations of X. The advantage of this now is if I put in Y underscore underscore num right arrow of zero, it tells me what is Y at that location. In addition, it allows me to treat it literally as something that I can plot. Y underscore underscore num of X is a function. I'm going to plot from zero to two, and there's our plot. I can also integrate the area under the curve. S colon equals. We'll use the integral sign. We'll go from zero tab two tab Y underscore underscore num right arrow of X tab X, and it should allow us to integrate this area under the curve. Oh, it did not. The reason it did not is because by putting 0 and 2 as integers, it is trying to solve this precisely. What we want to do is tell Maple to solve this numerically. So we'll set one of the boundaries to a numerical value, a floating point approximation, and now it will do this calculation. So as a reminder that when you do problems numerically, you must make sure that all the constants, that is the non-variables, do have been assigned a numerical value. I'm actually going to intentionally do this problem wrong to show you how to find errors. Here is a problem. This is a classic uh, mass with a driven harmonic oscillator system with drag. Okay, I've given it some initial conditions. Since this is a second order difference equation, I have to give it two initial conditions, both for at the initial at uh, t equals zero for the position and for the velocity. I have made sure that I've defined all the constants, I think. How do I know whether I've done it properly? What you can do before you start your desolve is to ask Maple after it is assigned the values, what are the ODEs and the ICES? Oops, I made a mistake here. Well, let's hit enter, let's hit enter, let's hit enter, and it looks good, um, except, oh, I can see that F sub zero 
never got assigned a value. That's the mistake here. I forgot to put a colon equals. So I'll go back, put a colon equals, that hits enter, and now that's corrected. Now we can solve. Okay, solutions. D solve curly bracket. ODES. Well, actually, there's only one ODES, but that's okay. ICES. It knows it's going to solve for x of t, comma, we want to solve this numeric, and again, the we want the output equals list procedure option to be included. Oh, there is an error. It says the use of global variables, numerical ODEs, blah, 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 blah. One of the problems is if we have not defined all the parameters with we've not assigned values to all the constants. If you look back here, notice x sub zero is never defined. That's because I made the mistake there. I'll go back, hit enter. So whenever you see this error, you know that one of your constants has not been defined. Now I'll go back, correct that, hit enter, hit enter, hit enter, and now we have provided the solutions. Great, now we can extract out the solutions and we can plot the two on the graph knowing that the x is measured in position, the velocity is measured in position per time, it's probably in this case meters per second. We can put a legend in it as well. Sometimes it is useful to solve problems numerically where you want to parameterize some of your constants. The advantage of this is that you can vary your, your constants and look at different scenarios depending upon the physical system, the, the conditions that you're working under. Here is a classic example, basically a pendulum with no drag whatsoever. We're going to give it some initial, we're going to pull the pendulum back some angle, okay, and give it no initial angular speed. Notice the only constant we have defined here is g. We are missing l and we're missing theta naught. If we were trying to solve this problem, again, we would get this particular error. But what we can do is we can actually tell Maple, and I'm going to put a comma in there, shift enter, that we have some parameters that we may want to work with. They are, and now we have to give them a list, so the ordered set, okay, of what these parameters are. I'll make the first parameter theta underscore underscore zero, and the second parameter comma L. Now when it does it, it actually returns the solutions. Then you say, well, how does it get a value? It doesn't. At this point, if I ask what the value is at t equals 1.0, it doesn't know because the parameters have not been initialized. So how do we initialize the parameters? We go back to our set of solutions and we're going to tell it what the parameters are, the values of the parameters. Parameters equals what's the value of the first parameter, we'll say 0 0.1, what's the value of the second parameter, we'll say 0 0.2. So we have a pendulum that we've pulled back by 0 0.1 radians and it has a length of 0 0.2 meters. Okay, now what it's done is it's now inserted those values and it's ready to do the integration as needed. So now if I say what is the value of the solutions for all our uh, uh, functions at 1.0, it actually can tell us what is theta at that location and uh, d theta dt at that time as well, not that location, that time. Now that we have the solutions, we can extract it and we can make a plot. Here is a plot when L equals 0 0.2. What if we want to redo this same problem, but we want to extend our pendulum to a length of 0 0.4? Well, again, we can change the parameters within the solutions. Solutions, open parentheses, parameters equals, again, we'll give it the same initial uh, angle, which it is offset, 0 0.1, but now we'll make the L value 0 0.4. And again, it will substitute that values in. And now we can make a similar plot, but with a length that is larger. When we put them on the same display, you can see that the red plot has a shorter period than the blue plot, which is not surprising. We made our pendulum longer for blue than we did for red. 
Sometimes it's useful to make phase plots. This is instead of plotting the function versus the parameter, you are plotting the function and its first derivative as a function of the parameter. So here is our second order ODE. We need two initial conditions, okay, or two boundary value conditions. We're going to solve this numerically. We calculate it and we can extract out both our solution and our first derivative. Putting our plot command in, you notice it is a function, the second derivative, comma, and there's the parameter all within the square brackets. That tells Maple to plot this as a parameterized type plot. Okay, another way we can visualize how our function is changing given its ODE and its initial conditions is through a procedure in the DE tools package known as DE plot. Here is our ODE. It models the classic Newton model of cooling. We have some object in an ambient temperature, T sub A. We give the object some te initial temperature and we say, how is it going to changing with time? Uh, here is our temperature uh, constant. And here's our ambient temperature. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a list, maple, a list of initial temperatures, 0, 35, uh, and 50 Celsius compared to the ambient temperature of 25. Here's how I've entered my DE plot. It is information it needs is what is the ODE, what is the function that I'm actually plotting, which is temperature as a function of time, what is the range that I'm going to plot my temperature. And finally, what I need important is what are those uh, lists of initial values for the temperature? Uh, not just zero, but we can put in multiple lists. What we're going to do is we're going to make a bunch of lines. We'll include some arrows. Um, you'll notice the grid. We put some labels in. Let's hit enter. And as you can see, what I've done is I've started at three different temperatures and the arrows indicate the direction at which the ODE is changing uh, or the temperature is changing due to the ODE with time. Not surprisingly, it follows these arrows in and now you can see what happens when the temperature goes from 0 to 20 seconds. Again, I encourage you to go to ghoul.prof to see more videos and more descriptions of types of problems you can solve. I will be making a separate video on how to use numerical solutions from ODEs and do animations from it.